Hello, welcome again to um, this FOSDEM session. Now my session is about MySQL router and the REST API. So who am I? I'm still Fred, I'm still MySQL evangelist, still managing MySQL since uh, 2023, uh, 20, which is the first version I installed. I'm DevOps believer living in Belgium and having a blog uh, very um, based on MySQL, which is lefred.be. You can follow me on Twitter at lefred. So what is MySQL router? MySQL router, it's a building block uh, of the HA solution. I discussed that on the previous talk I had earlier today. And uh, it simplify the application uh, development by routing uh, the connection to the MySQL servers, depending what it's uh, behind, which, be, which could be uh, InnoDB replica set or InnoDB cluster, right? So, it's uh, written in C++ and it's part of the MySQL trunk. So this talk is really uh, focused on the REST API, right? So why do we have this REST API? So when there is a problem uh, happening uh, and uh, it's not always very obvious to understand where, why we have this issue and what's the problem, right? Uh, for example, if we reach uh, for a given route the amount of max connection, right? Is it important to know that and know uh, what was the value uh, before we were able to reach it and, and stuff like that? And it's very nice to, to, to know that in advance. So monitoring, again, it's very important. And uh, you monitor your, your MySQL server, I hope. But how do you monitor your router? And this is why the MySQL router exposes data, statistics, settings, as a red endpoints via a HTTP method as a JSON payload. So this is explained in one of the um, workload, and the workload is uh, 8965, right? So if you are looking for more information, I just invite you uh, to check the workload. So how do we do that? So since MySQL 8 to 16, MySQL router has the possibility to launch an internal HTTP server. At that time, it could only serve some statics files, so it was not that uh, useful, I would say, but uh, it was one of the first piece uh, to, uh, uh, to reach what we have now. Then in 8 to 17, uh, we added this REST API to the uh, MySQL router, and with 8 to 20, the authentication credential uh, to access the REST API uh, could also be stored in the MySQL, uh, on MySQL in some uh, metadata table. And before it was just using uh, a file. So uh, please see the, the work log uh, for that. The work log is uh, 12952. And uh, which is better to have it on the database uh, because let's say uh, earlier you have to use a file and if you had uh, hundreds of router uh, modifying that file uh, and maintaining might be uh, a bit uh, problematic and also finally with 8022 uh, bootstrapping the MySQL router will also configure the REST API uh, functionality in uh, when it generates that uh, myscalrouter.conf uh, file, right? Before you had to add that uh, afterward if you wanted to use it. And now it's all uh, part of the bootstrap uh, system, which is fine. So let's have a look. So when we bootstrap, what we can have uh, from it, right? So here I will use curl. Uh, and as you can see, I will uh, connect to the 8443 port, which is the default uh, when you bootstrap it, and uh, it has an API. The, this value there, uh, 2019 0.17.15, it's kind of hard coded, and you need to use that right now. The version didn't change, and uh, currently it's this the API version, but it might change in the future. But why right now, not yet. And then we have that. Uh, Swagger.json, where you don't need authentication at all to connect to it. And uh, here I use a GQ um, um, command line uh, in, in, in Linux, which output it uh, a bit better. And so we have now the all the paths that are, are available. And as you can see, we have uh, some for metadata, some from uh, the status of the router, and some from the roots, right? So this is the information that currently uh, we have uh, in the router REST API. 
So as, as I said, you can connect to that without uh, authentication uh, for the moment. For this, for the Swagger or your JSON. For all the rest, you need to authenticate, right? And the uh, router use Realms uh, for authentication. And uh, like I said earlier, the backend can be a file or a record in a metadata table, right? So you have this in the configuration, backend metadata, metadata cache. This is the default when uh, you are uh, using the bootstrap option in the A222. If you use a file, you have the MySQL router underscore password ID command line to uh, allow you, uh, to help you to create and generate and manage the user in that file. So, we have a file. I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. Now, uh, we have this table in the metadata that we can use and to connect the, the REST API. Let's have a look to that table, right? So, this is the table. The, the table, it's called uh, Router REST Account. So, as you can see here in, in the screen, uh, if it's a bit too small, um, don't worry, you will have the slide too. You can see that we are on the schema MySQL InnoDB cluster metadata and the table, it's router rest accounts and we have some information here, right? So this is all, all that, that table looks like. So when the bootstrap uh, a router against MySQL InnoDB cluster or InnoDB replica set, we need to add after a user in this table to, uh, to use it, to be able to authenticate to use the REST API. And let me share with you, because we are first them, we can uh, do some some uh, special stuff, right? So let me share with you my journey to add that user in the router REST account. That was maybe the, the most interesting uh, part of it. And it's very easy now. Uh, but to be there, it might be more complicated. So I wanted to share you with you th that story, right? And that journey looks like this. So let's try. First, what I did, okay, I will insert that uh, user. So, okay, the user, it's, uh, I will call it uh, Fred. Uh, I will uh, use FOSDEM as a password and let's see if it works, right? So I do my curl, nothing. Nothing happened, no output. I'm using roots, so I need authentication. No, nothing. So let's use the browser, try to get there. And it asks me, of course, for a username and password. When I type Lefret and force them, it, it doesn't work. So security one, Lefret zero. Of course, I just put a, a standard, uh, let's say, a clear text uh, password, and it's not what we are expecting. So for my second attempt, I asked to the router dev team uh, for an example of string I could use. Then the reply, the reply was very simple. Oh, just copy the value you have in authentication string column in the MySQL user, and you will see uh, it works. So I check that uh, my MySQL user, remember if you were there in the first talk, I created a cluster admin user, and this is the authentication string I have. Okay, let's do that. So uh, I will uh, add it, and I will select that authentication string and add it to it. And let's test it. Oh, cool, it works. So I ask for the roots, authenticate with the user and the password, and this is what we have. Very perfect. But being a bit picky, maybe boring sometime, uh, I don't want to use a MySQL user to monitor the router. I don't want to have a, a user created or and copy his password from the MySQL user table to monitor the router. This is not what I like. So it's important uh, to, imp to provide uh, accurate information when, uh, and the context when you ask something even to the MySQL developer. So it works, but this is not what I wanted. So the threat again zero, developer one, second uh, defeat for me. Okay, so my goal was to manage the credential, right? And uh, for the REST API using the, the MySQL shell plugin, because I like to create shell plugins. And uh, I wanted to manage this user using the shell plugin. And uh, okay, 
uh, they told me it should be the same as the MySQL user. So, if this is what I should do, let's do it. Let's generate it. So, I created a program that does that. So, I create a program that creates this uh, caching SHA2 password authentication, authentication string. So, I do for first then, this is what I have. And let's test it. So, I added uh, this output in my uh, rest, router REST accounts. And it works. Perfect. Woohoo! But I don't want to use an external program. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I'm a bit boring and picky or whatever. But if I want to provide uh, shell plugins, I don't want people to also add uh, a binary program uh, on their system. And maybe they don't use the same system as I do. I'm using Linux, but people are using Mac, are using Windows, and it is not very portable. So, refret worked, but zero usability one, a second defeat. So I said, okay, let's try something else. How can I, what can I do? Oh, I will write a component. Joe will be happy. So I create a component in MySQL, select generate authentication string, force them uh, to, and as you can see, I have my uh, string here. I will add that string in the router REST account, connect, woohoo, it works, perfect. But it means that uh, people need to install a component in MySQL server and need uh, to maintain it. I need to maintain it. Maybe this is not what I really want to do, right? So once again, the threat <laughs> defeated usability too. So what can I do? What are my other options here? See, so I said, okay, uh, let me ask again uh, with more context this time to the MySQL router uh, development team, right? So I went there and I asked them, hey guys, this is what I want to do. And let me summarize the answer. The answer was, oh, we do support MySQL 8 default authentication string. Okay, perfect. But also modular crypt format for MCF style password, ashes, and specified in the workload. Oops, my bad, right? This means, what does that mean for us, right? This means that the standard Python crypt module is what I need. So I do import crypt, crypt for them here like this, and I have a password I can use and it will work perfectly. So once again, <laughs> the Fred Zero developer this time too. So I try to use what I just did with crypt, right? And it works! Woohoo! Perfect! Go back here, you can see I use this time for them tree and it works uh, perfectly, right? Woohoo! So what does that mean? So it means now I can have that and create that user in my uh, shell plugins. So let's have a look. So we can use this REST API with curl, right? And uh, include this in some monitoring tool like Sensu and Insinga or whatever and you can see you have all the information you need. Perfect. So this is what I recommend you to use this REST API to monitor your router. Now because uh, I like to use the shell right let's see uh, how we can do that in the shell. I invite you uh, to go uh, on my github you have a a lot of shell plugins. Uh, you can see there is wiki page explaining them. There are more and more contributors to it, so it, this is good. And we have one now that uh, you can benefit for all this REST API into this um, plugin. So first thing to do, let's create the user. This is what I wanted to do, right? So I use router, create REST user, enter the username, enter the password, verify the password, and that's it. It does that. It will create, it will populate that table uh, for us, right? And it says, okay, you can use know that uh, for them user to authenticate and you can create a, uh, a router object and this is how you create it uh, to monitor. So let's do that. Much easier, of course, and much convenient, right? More convenient. So let's create that router object. So what we do, my router, router create, Let's use the FOSDEM user, 
the IP of uh, the, the router up and we can see it creates the router and we have some information about it and this is the functions out uh, the methods out of that object so let's see the status so what I do now my router status and what do I see I see the cluster name so oh, the name is my cluster uh, it always refresh successfully the refresh host name was single mysql one and then I have some roots four roots root uh, my cluster read only so the routing strategy we can see it's round robin with fallback the protocol is the classic so it's 3306 the, what my use uh, usually but you can see that we have also uh, for the x protocol and we can see how many uh, total connection it has which one are active which if it has blocked host and where it goes so when you connect to the read only of the classic protocol you reach my 2 and my 3 when you connect to the um, uh, read write with the classic protocol you are reaching single the the node called single mysql where it has uh, 523 connections and for active right now it, it has also a blocked host so we can see here oh there is some uh, hosts that are not able to use the router right now so we have this um, host blocked in the router which one is it can we see that sure with the router object, my router blocked host, and we can see oh, for read write 10.0.1.2, it's blocked. So all that information, it comes from the REST API, and you can see it directly in the shell. And of course, we can see routing statistics, right? So we can do my router connections, and we can see, okay, for the route, which are the source, the destination, from uh, how many uh, traffic it has from the server to the server, and when the connection started, you can see all that. Because, uh, and so you can see here from where people are connecting to the client, uh, to the router, before uh, joining uh, the, um, the database, and where, which destination it is. So, this is how it works. You can see it's very easy. REST API can provide you a lot of information. So if you have question now, I'm very happy to answer your question, waiting uh, live to answer your question. Thank you very much for attending. Have a nice FOSDEM and uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.